Hey all here at OS Reviews. In today's video, we are taking a revisited look at the BlackBerry Passport here in 2022. Time really does fly. This is a phone that came out at the end of 2014, so it's hard to imagine that this thing is now over seven years old, uh, because in a way it still has such a unique form factor and design, notably thanks to the dimensions of this phone, which are incredibly wide and in fact named as the Passport because it has the exact same surface area of a regular Passport. A pretty smart reference because it also alludes to how this will be a really good travel companion, especially for business professionals, mostly thanks to the combination of the square display, which measures 4.5 inches diagonally, offers a 2K resolution by the way, which is still crystal sharp, along with a built-in QWERTY keyboard at the base, which is of course a mainstay of BlackBerry phones, just in a much more kind of narrow form factor. This is a phone that is incredibly well suited for the aforementioned business this crowd that want to focus on productivity, things like working on spreadsheets, you're able to see just so much more rows and columns using this form factor similar to on a desktop computer. We're presented with experience that is very comfortable for reading back articles and seeing sites which is closer to again an aspect ratio that you would find on something like an iPad. However, it also meant that one of the weaknesses of a BlackBerry Passport would be in media consumption. Primarily, if you're thinking about watching videos, you can imagine most content these days is optimized for widescreen form factors. However, it still is a very deliberate trade-off for folks that are looking for this particular form factor, again, aimed more for web browsing, reading, as well as for document editing. Now, as we look back on this device, there are a few things to keep in mind. One of them is this phone is actually powered by BB10 or BlackBerry 10 operating system and it is also a very elegant UI that allows you to support kind of gestures when you're navigating along very much ahead of its time now that gesture support has been fully embraced by both iOS and Android of course uh, however the sad news is there are a lot of legacy BlackBerry services including BlackBerry Hub BlackBerry Messenger which consolidates all of your social media services notifications into this one hub have been shut down here at the start of 2022 the writing's been on the wall for a while now as BlackBerry themselves have officially quit the smartphone business. They've just licensed their name to Alcatel and that company has produced the Key One and Key Two smartphones running on Android. So it's inevitable that there are certain features of this phone that will just no longer function anymore after servers have been unfortunately shut down. In fact, if you reset your phone and you're trying to reactivate a brand new device, it will often prompt you to enter or create a new BlackBerry 10 account. And unfortunately, because the servers have been discontinued, you're no longer able to do that. But thankfully, there are forums and different ways to get around that activation screen and using alternative apps and services. But again, just requires a little bit more of uh, hacking or getting around certain limitations to get into the experience. Nevertheless, let's take a closer look at, again, revisiting some of the specs and the design here. So underneath the hood, this phone did rock pretty powerful components for its day, including the Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 chipset, which was coupled with three gigabytes of RAM. And that meant that this was one of the most powerful BlackBerry phones that was ever released running on the BB10 OS. And in the day, it just simply flew in terms of the fluidity. Even now, it really is not bad as far as everything still feels quite fast and responsive, especially helped by this beautiful, again, quad HD display. Otherwise, as you've kind of seen in our video already, the Three row QWERTY keyboard is also capacitive and fully touch sensitive, supporting multi touch as well. So you can use it as a trackpad when you are navigating the web and reading back articles. Pretty neat, and also allows you to quickly swipe to offer suggested text entry. The overall frame of the phone is also wrapped in this delicate aluminum alloy, which feels very premium and solid. The back of the phone offers a soft touch rubber accent, which is very grippy and comfortable to hold, along with a 13 megapixel rear facing camera with an LED flash. Underneath this flap is where you can also access your SIM card slot and micro SD card slot to expand on the built-in memory. A simple power key sits at the top, although you can also opt for the gesture of swiping up slowly on the display to wake it up, uh, which is also very convenient. Finally, on the right-hand spine, you find access to a standard volume rocker with also a mainstay on Blackberries, which was a media play and pause key. When we do a quick size comparison here with a few other Blackberry devices, including something like, uh, let's say, the Q10 that has a much smaller display, obviously, and weaker 
internals, uh, we can see definitely a, a difference there in terms of the form factor uh, with the larger display on the passport, just making it much more immersive as you're working on it. Although we are getting a keyboard that is also missing one row, and that's because instead of housing the physical numbers, you get a virtual row instead for accessing some of those controls, kind of like a touch bar, which we'll see later on. And then we also have devices like, say, the BlackBerry Priv, which was technically the first and last Android-powered BlackBerry by the actual Research in Motion company, and also offers similar tricks, including that capacitive trackpad, but just, again, runs on a more modern version of Android instead, offers curved edges, and it's a more conventional phone because it has a widescreen display, and you can hide the keyboard when not in use, which, to be honest, makes it more of a versatile device that can just suit the needs, I can imagine, of more people. But it's just the fact that this phone is so obviously different that in my opinion, actually makes it more unique and fun, uh, just trying to go against the norm. Anyways, revisiting the UI here, again, we can swipe down to access the notifications. Everything here is super fast and speedy. Now inside, there's also a 3,410 milliamp hour capacity battery, which was large for the time. And even today, this is a phone that can easily get you through a day, if not a day and a half of usage, which tops up pretty quickly using a standard micro USB port flanked by stereo speakers at the bottom. The apps and services on here, so some of these, of course, no longer function, including BlackBerry Messenger, BlackBerry World, but you can also find the Amazon App Store on here, and that's because BlackBerry 10 OS devices technically can emulate Android apps. However, it has to be on a relatively old version of Android, around Android 4.0, that is. So for more modern applications, you can try and sideload those APKs, but they may not necessarily always run unless you can find one that is supporting the older version of the platform, but still opens up a little bit more flexibility of the OS. But we do find a handful of utility tools from BlackBerry themselves, which are beautifully designed. This almost reminds me of an AMOLED screen, even though it is just an IPS LCD with its contrast levels and how everything here just looks so elegant with the UI. You can swipe easily because it is using 2.5D curves on the glass, which slightly tapers off, making swipe interactions just feel very comfortable when you are navigating with the entire UI. Just a very elegant experience, I have to say. Some other motions that you can do, including swiping here to the right to access the BlackBerry Hub and seeing if you have any missed notifications or messages, even though unfortunately that no longer works, as well as even from the lock screen, you're able to check and see quickly, do I have some quick messages? For the most part, all of the utility tools, including phone calls, will still work as expected. So things like the weather app, for example, no issues there as far as refreshing and taking a look at uh, additional stats here for the day, including LinkedIn as well as YouTube. These are essentially just shortcuts, so they will launch into the pretty capable BB10 browser, which still works to this day for loading back videos. In fact, we can take a quick look um, at one of the videos here as, as example. It's also a good time to check out uh, the keyboard, which I have to say is pretty comfortable to type on, and it's tactile, it's responsive, and for the most part better than I was expecting, uh, considering that I did feel like it was going to be a little bit more narrow or cramped because of its placement and its positioning further down on the phone. But surprisingly, I found it to still be very comfortable when actually using it in person. And with some practice, you're able to get higher accuracy and perhaps a little bit more work done versus a on-screen touchscreen keyboard. So here's what it looks like to watch back a video. It still loads back very quickly and also with the speakers sound like as well. And turning down the volume there, some takeaways being that it does offer excellent sound through the built-in speaker, super loud, and even offers a little bit of bass as well. The media controls are easy to use, including the play pause, which again works on YouTube videos as well. It's just very convenient. Display is super sharp and beautiful to see. However, you definitely get this very strange view because it's technically zoomed out. Uh, if you want to watch it in the typical 16 by 9 aspect ratio, this is an example of how much black bars we are talking about. So unfortunately, Unfortunately, not the best media consumption experience, although you can, again, technically get a full screen view, but you're just losing out on much more sections of the frame. And what I really like about BB10 is all of the gesture supports for jumping back and forth between open apps, which are then displayed on this home screen here as cards that you can easily jump back and forth between or close out of if you're no longer using. And for the most part, the three gigs of RAM seems to be pretty well optimized on this device as 
as you can see, their apps are still for the most part open in the background as we jump back and forth, which is impressive. Now let's jump into the camera performance next at, again, 13 megapixels. This was decent for BlackBerry standards, but it's by no means really the best camera in the world, especially in today's standards, as now we are talking about seven years later. Offering some additional basic controls, including self-timers, burst modes, and panoramic shots, as well as that front-facing camera too for video chatting and selfies. So not really the best, of course, but you can still get overall decent levels of detail and clarity. For a BlackBerry, it was considered quite good, and it's definitely going to be able to get the job done in terms of preserving some of your memories. Though it's not going to beat a Pixel or the latest iPhone here, we do have NFC built on in, so you can also use it for connecting to things. Although contactless payment apps can still be not quite as easy to find uh, when looking back on an older version of the OS. And here's an example of what browsing is like on this phone. So as aforementioned, the boxy shape actually makes content seem more comfortable as you're reading and interacting with it, which is good. And the, again, keyboard here can also support multi-touch for trackpad gestures, which is quite convenient. Very sharp and beautiful display. It's obviously not going to be quite as fast or instantaneous to load pages anymore as compared to the latest flagships, but overall it's not too shabby and can still be for sure a serviceable experience. Just give it a second or two longer for things to load. Again, the Snapdragon 800-801 <clears throat> were really ahead of their time. They started kind of that modern trend of powerhouse performance on mobile devices. For a long time they had still held up in terms of being very good performers. Finally, here in 2022, I would say they're starting to show their age a little bit more, no longer quite the top of their game. But if you're putting it against budget phones, I still think that the level of performance can be smoother. With that being said, I will say that it definitely gets a bit warm in everyday usage just because increasingly apps as well as the web have become more complex and more intensive on the processor and memory. So these days, it's not going to be quite as cool to the touch when it's operating these tasks like maybe they once was, uh, but you will definitely feel a little bit more of heat build up, but not too bad, never really thermal throttles, but definitely gets a little bit warm there at the bottom. Now as a phone, the device still works with 4G LTE support, however the form factor is always going to be a little bit strange because it's not quite as long as a candy bar that can naturally put the microphone closer to your mouth. But this would be very good for conference calls because the speakers are loud, you have multiple microphones for noise cancellation, or you can always use a Bluetooth headset or headphones instead. Pretty good reception quality at the end of the day, so no issues in terms of staying connected. Perhaps last but not least, you can type along on the keyboard anywhere to instantly pull up kind of a universal search that will go through all of the apps, which is very convenient and easy to use, including the smart assistant that BlackBerry tried to create to compete with Siri and Cortana Alexa back in the day, pretty much no longer works as well because servers have shut down. But again, you are able to ask it questions by typing things out to search up apps. And some of those features can still be found primarily for the universal search. That is more or less it as far as our revisited look at the BlackBerry Passport here in 2022. Just like when we revisited some LG phones a while back, this is kind of a sad video in a, in a sense because BB10 was so ahead of the curve in terms of the gestures, everything being just so elegant and a joy to use, but the lack of software support from app developers uh, really was one of the biggest hindrances along with some of these devices just coming out too late uh, at the time where Android and iOS were starting to rapidly gain market share that a lot of folks didn't really even give these phones much of a chance. So these days, if you're shopping around, you can find a BlackBerry Passport typically for around 50 bucks online. So it is incredibly cheap. It is definitely a part of mobile history and again, remains as the most powerful BB10 powered device that includes tablets like the Playbook. Uh, we're all not quite as strong as the chipset and RAM in inside of this thing. Uh, so in that sense, I would say it still is kind of an interesting phone if you're okay with primarily browsing the web, uh, doing things like text message and calling, simple tasks like that, and you just want something novel uh, with an interesting form factor and keyboard, which is excellent. This can still be worth considering, especially at the budget price. But do keep in mind that a lot of the other services and integration with BlackBerry's own hub and some of their own servers have been severed. So you don't get that complete integration anymore like you once did, which again, pretty sad, but also tells us how hard it is to stay afloat in the mobile industry. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the iconic BlackBerry Passport.